Hi, my name is Brandon Grazley, and I'm going to show you how to make math tutorial videos quickly and easily with your phone and just using a piece of paper. So the first step is to get a good camera app. The features you're looking for are focus locking, exposure locking, and some way to adjust the quality settings. Um, on the iPhone default camera app, you can just press and hold on a location on the screen, and that will lock the focus and the exposure. So I recommend doing that just on the paper that you have without anything else in the way. Just sort of tap and hold on your screen when you're ready, and that will lock both the focus and the exposure. For Android, I recommend the Open Camera app. It's free. There are actually no ads in it, and it's open source. I've been using it for a long time, and it's pretty awesome. You can really uh, dial in the quality of the video with the settings that it has available for you. Step two is to get a stand ready for your phone. This is for sure the most complicated part. Basically, you're trying to suspend your phone over top of the paper in a way that doesn't cause shadows and doesn't obstruct your view. So I've done this for a long time where I had a box and then some way to sort of support the phone on top of it hanging out over top of my piece of paper. So I've used like a, a board or a piece of cardboard. I've even just put a heavy thing on top of my phone itself just to keep it from falling off the box and sort of shushing it out further over top of the paper. Um, what I do now though, I use a music stand and it works really well because it's height adjustable also and uh, it doesn't get in the way of what I'm seeing. But basically what you see there is uh, the kind of setup you're looking for. A wire cube is really popular. Um, the problem with those is that depending on where your lighting is set up, you might have difficulty with shadows showing up on your paper. It might not be that big of a deal, so if you have that kicking around, it might be worth using a wire cube instead. It's certainly simple to put your phone on top of it. The third step is to set up your good lighting. Um, the two things you're looking for, one is that it's bright enough, and secondly, that it minimizes the shadows that are in the way of what you're trying to show. If you put the light on the opposite side of the page from you, Either you set up in front of a window or you've got a, like a lamp set up across from you um, on the other side of the paper, then you'll end up with shadows that are close to you but not in the way of stuff that's um, above you on the paper. And so this is generally good. What you see down in the bottom left corner there is the setup that I use and it's generally fine. Here's the setup that I used for the last video that I made. I just had a lamp positioned uh, on the other side of the page from me. You can see my music stand there with my phone suspended over it and it's just ready to go. When you're preparing to record, you've got a few things to think about. First of all, get everything ready that you're going to need before you start recording so that you don't have to start over unnecessarily when you realize you don't have a pencil. Practice what you're going to say ahead of time a little bit, especially the first few times you do this, and I suggest working through any math examples ahead of time so that you know exactly what to expect and you won't freeze when you forget uh, you know, what two times three is. And you should turn off anything that makes noise, like an air conditioner or a fan or a water pump. Maybe turn off something like a furnace. Um, if you have other devices around, like another phone or tablet, put them in silent mode. And even maybe put them in a different room so they don't vibrate and make noise in the way. Also, if you have a squeaky chair or something, consider doing something different. Finding a chair that doesn't have, um, you know, rolling uh, casters, that sort of thing. You want to cut down the amount of noise that you're making by being in the room also. Okay, you're ready to record. Typically, you'll want to speak a little slower than you normally would. Try not to jump around to visually to different parts of your page. Certainly don't move your page up and down quickly. That makes it hard for somebody to watch. If you make a small mistake that you can fix in the middle, like you forgot a negative sign in the previous line, something like that, Go ahead and just fix it. That's normal. Everybody expects you to make some mistakes as you go. But if you make some really major mistakes, you should probably start over if you can't just fix it on the fly easily. If it's going to be confusing for the person watching, maybe just try again. Your audio quality is much more important than your video quality. We're pretty good at looking at something and figuring out what it says. But when you listen to something and it's scratchy or very echoey or just um, low quality audio, it's really irritating. And so make sure that your audio quality is great, much more important than getting a good video. And if you can edit, if you have that ability with some software, then consider only recording one page or example per video. So you start and stop your, um, your app, camera app multiple times. It makes it a little bit easier in the editing phase because you know, oh, it's on the third example that I made a mistake that I want to go and fix it.
Step six is optional, that's editing. Here are some ideas. You can improve your audio quality with some noise removal. For example, you can import your video file into Audacity, run the noise removal feature on there, export the audio again so that you can use it in your video editing app. Um, you can trim the beginning and the end off. That gives you a little bit of lead time with some silence at the beginning and the end, which also makes noise removal better. Make note of the times that you want to clip out while you're recording. So if you made a mistake at 5 minutes and 17 seconds, have a piece of paper off to the side where you note that time signature, and then you can go back pretty quickly to find out the time that you made a mistake instead of having to scrub through the video for a long time looking for that boo-boo. Don't fuss too much with it. You're probably not producing a professional video, so you don't need everything to be perfect, and it's not worth spending an extra half hour just to clean up a few ums and ohs that you said in the middle. Don't worry about it. And last, if you have limited bandwidth, consider downsampling the video, either making it a smaller resolution or reducing the frame rate or the bit rate. But I would recommend not reducing audio quality. Leave that really high. It's the video that takes up all the space. Last, it's time to upload. YouTube has a lot of advantages over other platforms. It's really visible. Basically, everyone can access it. The user, whoever's watching your video, has a lot of control over the quality of the video. So if they want to use a smaller, um, smaller amount of bandwidth, they can do that just by making a choice on their end. You can upload a high quality video and they can download something that is um, less high quality according to their needs. Um, I recommend a clear descriptive title that it says exactly what it is that you're going to be teaching in your video. Um, you should tag it appropriately. If you are doing this for a particular course, you might tag it with the course code specifically, and you might come up with a special tag for yourself that it's easy for people to find. You should use playlists to organize each series or each course that you produce. So if you have a whole bunch of videos about exponential functions, make a playlist just for that. That'll make it easier for people to find things. And if you're recording a series, maybe make a consistent thumbnail image. That way it's easy for people to know which video they have. So I'm going to show you an example of that right now. So here's one for exponential functions. Notice I have part three. It says exactly what it is. There's even a picture there to help. But you shouldn't put important things in the bottom right corner because on YouTube and most other platforms, that's where when somebody is scrolling, they'll see how long the video is, a timestamp in the bottom right corner, and it would cover over some of your thumbnail image. So don't put things like uh, part three, number three, down in that bottom corner. It makes it hard to see. And last, just have some fun. It's challenging to make a great video, but making a good one's not hard. Go ahead and give it a try, and you can ask questions in the comments if you have any. Thanks.